Importance of consistency. People nowadays say that quality is a thousand times more important than quantity, but very few realize that quantity is an essential part of the strategy when it comes to reaching people in social media. As when doing exercise, you can have high quality workouts, but you won't see progress if you exercise only once a month. Being organized and consistent when you start creating content for your channel is essential to your growth on the web. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to publish a video a day, but it does mean that you have to schedule every time you want to upload new content. This will help you be more organized and keep your audience engaged. Be consistent. Maintain a good upload frequency and be patient with it. YouTube channels don't evolve overnight, they grow slowly, because being seen by people and recommended takes time. But you also need to consider that to maintain the interest on your channel, frequent updates are necessary. Set a specific day or days during the week, so your user base know what to expect from you and when to come back for more content. If people love your content, you will have them waiting for the day or days when their favorite YouTuber makes a new upload. If you're starting as a YouTuber, there's no need to make overly lengthy videos. The first 10 seconds of every video are crucial, especially as a new YouTuber. Sell what you offer in that time and don't make too long videos, at least while you're starting to capture an audience. Estimations about YouTube behavior show that around 80% of the users only watch the first 10 seconds when scanning for new content. It's clear that YouTube is not going to bring you much if you don't get visitors, but that's a tough step if you're just starting in that world. No YouTuber started with millions of followers. On the contrary, the process required a lot of perseverance and love for what they do. Be organized. Keeping a well-planned content calendar will help you keep publishing content regularly, and if you've chosen a topic you like, you can take a notebook with you or write down in your smartphone notes the ideas you come up with. Writing down everything will ensure that no idea is left out. If you are thriving on ideas and you're ahead on production, you can always schedule your uploads to go public on a set date and time. Take care of the space where you make your videos. Maintaining a space design for your videos will help you to give them a particular aesthetic to the videos you make. If you don't have an ample space, you can use any blank space in your house. Many YouTubers started this way. Keeping your space in order allows you to create a video at any time, especially when there is a last-minute trend to which you should contribute any criticism or comment or even an idea you have had to document. Analyze your data. Being guided by the number of views, likes and comments are not enough to know how your YouTube channel is performing. Fortunately, the platform offers detailed performance reports through YouTube Studio. To access it, click on your user icon at the top right and you'll find the button. This is the ideal starting point as it includes easy-to-understand tables and graphs, as well as ready-made reports. With these resources, you can quickly uncover valuable and meaningful information that you can start working with instantly. Main metrics you should review in your digital video channel. 1. Predict the success of a video. The first 48 hours of a digital video are crucial. If you get views from 20% of your subscribers, it means you will maintain excellent performance. To determine your viewer to subscriber ratio, go to Creator Studio and compare the number of plays to the number of subscribers. 2. Most popular content. To analyze audience participation, go to Creator Studio, go to the Analytics tab, and select Overview. You'll get entire graphs of likes, dislikes, comments, and shares. You can also review the performance of individual videos and identify which ones generate the most actions. 3. Measure organic views. Organic traffic is that which comes naturally, without the intervention of paid advertising. It is essential to know the number of natural views to determine how well the YouTube algorithm works for your channel and whether your videos appear in the search results. In Analytics, go to Traffic Sources. You'll see a list of figures for each traffic source such as YouTube search, suggested videos, browsing functions, etc. 4. Measuring visits through YouTube searches. YouTube is the second most used search engine. Many users go directly to the platform to make queries. This metric is important, especially when your channel is new and little known, since the search engine is practically the only way to get visits, so it is vital to optimize the SEO of your videos. Check out this metric in traffic sources. 5. Viewing time. This metric is critical to identify whether you're engaging the audience with your content, or not. There may be videos with many views where users only stay for the first few minutes and then leave. In Analytics, select Playback Time. In the graph, you can see the average viewing time your audience spends on your videos, and in the list below the time breakdown for each of them. If you click on any of them, you will see its graph. 6. Retention. 
Retention is the metric that helps you determine how relevant your channel and videos are to the audience. With this, you will know the average length of stay of users within your channel and the key points of each video where you achieved higher audience retention. If the user went back to watch a scene again, it would show higher retention at that point. 7. Most Recommended Videos Within traffic sources, you can see the number of times your videos appear as recommended. This is a great way to increase your channel's popularity, especially if your video appears as a suggestion after a popular one. Check to see which of your videos appear most frequently as recommendations. As you can see, having a large number of subscribers is not enough if you discover that they are not watching your videos, and you have not captivated them with the content. A detailed audit can identify patterns of what works best and optimize your channel. Contacting Brands YouTube video platform currently has nearly 1.5 billion users per month. Roughly 90 countries have users on YouTube, who consume an average of 1 billion hours a day of content. Every minute, about 400 hours of content are uploaded to YouTube. These data indicate that video consumption has been increasing among internet users. Besides, YouTube is the place where you can find all kinds of content in video format. Therefore, everything indicates that today YouTube is a valuable tool in any digital marketing strategy. That's why the most prominent brands have their channels where, in addition to creating highly creative content, they form strategic alliances with the most notable YouTube influencers. What action is right for you? There are different tactics that you can implement with third parties, which will depend on the focus of the negotiation. Therefore, you must know some of the different types of strategies you can apply to work together with brands. A. Marketing to the brand. It is the previous step to formalize the relationship with a brand and includes all actions that are made to contact you and discuss the great proposal, to establish a partnership. It consists of showing the brand why they should partner with you. You must know very well the market in which your potential allies locate to understand how to generate value in your proposal. Likewise, it is advisable to include calls to action CTA, after all the presentation of benefits to make them schedule a meeting or pass you a counterproposal. Many times, it is also useful to include a PDF document with some previous actions you have done with other brands or even your channel statistics. It should be like a resume, but in this case, you should continuously update it. B. Marketing with the brand. Once the alliance is created, we move on to the making of videos, of course, raising all the ideas that may exist so that, in this case, the value of the brand gets highlighted. Choosing a template that both shares through social networks is good practice, so they will be aligned as brands and seek to generate impact from both communities. C. Marketing through the brand. Within this category is affiliate marketing, where your role as an influencer is to serve as a bridge to publicize the product or brand. It is also usually the case where the product is offered with some special discount to the community with a specific code. This way, the brand can know how many people you have genuinely reached. D. Marketing for the brand. This is the modality in which one party uses its positioning and engagement to attract quality audiences, while the other party is in charge of the follow up. This strategy is applied to then work towards the conversion of those with the best profile to become users of the brand. Sharing the moment of growth with strategic allies can be greatly beneficial, as long as you know how to do it without being in a position to lose within that symbiosis generated by working with others. Preparing the ground for a great conquest. More and more companies are starting to reap the benefits of doing business with others, so can you. Dare to create your winning alliances. Below you will find a series of criteria that you should be clear about before going down this new path. 1. Define your objectives. You can't start looking for allies if you don't know what you need them for. You must first determine where your channel is at because, for example, if you are in a growth phase, you will need to argue more about what you are doing. Keep in mind that when establishing a new alliance, if your ally is more consolidated in the market, you may give more in the relationship. This does not mean you will lose, but rather that you will be targeting a market that probably does not know the type of service you are offering. Therefore, knowing what your objectives are will give you a guideline to understand what kind of alliances you might need, which markets to target and what actions with third parties might attract new customers. 2. Keep the points clear. As in any relationship, conditions need to be clear from the outset. Each stakeholder must know what the expectations regarding them are and what they have to give in return. This helps to maintain harmony and allows you to work more comfortably while building that trust that often grows stronger over time. 3. Similar targets. Sharing a common audience to an extent is necessary for interested parties because this will complement the offer of both, and the actions will provide positive results for all interested parties. 
A common mistake when starting is to work together with other brands just because those who manage them are trustworthy people, even though each company's market is different. This situation is often short-lived. The losses are directly proportional to the futility of efforts to stimulate future revenue due to a lack of consistency in your channel's value proposition. If you want brands to take an interest in you, you must create content that is worth sharing, and that also sparks interest in new audiences. After all, the main objective of brands is to achieve exposure and reach through your channel. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.